How do we calculate ROIC? The formula for return on invested capital measures how well a company generates cash flow compared to the capital it has invested in the business. Here is the formula, and we will break it down. Return on invested capital equals no pat divided by average invested capital. There are four components to ROIC. Number one, we use operating income or EBIT earnings before income taxes instead of net income. Number two, we adjust the operating income or EBIT by the company's marginal tax rate. Number three, we use book values for the company as opposed to market values. Number four, we also need to consider the timing of financials. The capital invested comes from the end of the year, whereas the EBIT remains the current value, i.e., by quarter or annual data. A final note before we dive in. NOPAT stands for Net Operating Profit After Tax, for those who are curious. Okay, now that we know the formula, let's start to find the numbers to plug into our formula. The first company I would like to explore is Microsoft. We will calculate based on the latest annual 10K from June 30th, 2022. The first number we need to pull together is Earnings Before Interest and Taxes, or EBIT, or its proxy, Operating Income. Before proceeding, all numbers will be in millions unless otherwise stated. Operating income, or EBIT, equals 83,383,000. Next, we will need to calculate the tax rate for Microsoft, or you could go to your favorite website and find it. I use gurufocus.com as my go-to. To find the effective tax rate, we use the following formula. Tax rate percentage equals tax expense divided by pre-tax income. So if we go back to our income statement, we can find our numbers. I will highlight them for you. Let's calculate our effective tax rate from the above numbers. Income tax expense, or benefit, equals 10978000 Earnings before income taxes equals 83716000 Tax rate percentage equals 10978000 divided by 83,716,000. Tax rate percentage equals 13.11%. Okay, now we need to determine our average invested capital. The formula for this will be invested capital equals book value of debt plus book value of equity minus cash and cash equivalents. We do the above calculation for the end of 2022 and 2021 using the 10Ks for each year. The book value of debt will require two numbers, total debt and capital lease obligation, minority interest. We will look at Microsoft's balance sheet to find the total debt. For 2021, we add the numbers listed under liabilities. Current portion of long-term debt equals 8,702,000. Long-term debt equals 50,074,000. Operating lease liabilities equals 9629000 Next, let's find the minority interest of which Microsoft has none on its balance sheet. From the shareholders' equity section, we would see the line item listed as non-controlling interest, which is the same as a minority interest. Now let's add up our debt. 2021 total debt equals 8702000 plus 50074000 plus 9,629,000, equaling $68,405,000. Now let's do the same process for 2022. 2022 book value of debt equals 2,749,000, plus 47,032,000, plus 11,489,000, equaling 62,270,000. The next item we need is the book value of the equity which will be the total shareholders' equity listed on the balance sheet under the shareholders' equity section. 2021 book value of equity equals 141,988,000. 2022 book value of equity equals 166,542,000. The last two items will be cash and goodwill from the balance sheet. 2021 cash and equivalents equals 130,334,000. 2022 cash and equivalents equals 104,757,000. 
Now that we have all our numbers, we can calculate the invested capital for Microsoft for 2021 and 2022. Invested capital 2021 equals 68,405,000 plus 141,988,000 plus 130,334,000 equaling 80,059,000. Invested capital 2022 equals 61,270,000 plus 166,540,000 minus 104,757,000 equaling 108,636,000. ROIC equals NOPAT divided by invested capital 2022 plus invested capital 2021, divided by 2. ROIC equals 83,383,000, times 1 minus 13 and 11 percent, divided by 80,059,000, plus 108,636,000, divided by 2. ROIC, 72,451,000, divided by 94,347,000. ROIC equals 76.79%. At this point, let's wait a moment before we analyze what our formula came up with before deciding if Microsoft's ROIC is good or bad. What is a good ROIC? Now that we have figured out how to calculate a return on invested capital for a company we would like to buy, We need to analyze the results of our calculations and how we can determine if any company remains a good allocator of their capital. First, we need to compare the ROIC to its cost of capital. The cost of capital refers to the weighted cost of capital, or WAC. Generally, we want a company with a higher return on invested capital than its cost of capital. Why do we compare ROIC to the return on capital? Because it costs money to raise capital. And a company earning returns greater than the cost to raise capital earns excess returns. If a company continues to earn greater returns versus the cost of capital, its value will increase. For example, as of this writing, Walmart's cost of capital, or WAC, is 6.07%, with an estimated ROIC of 13.76%, indicating Walmart earns returns above the cost of capital which in turn indicates a reason why Walmart continues to thrive. If we look at the calculations we did with Microsoft above, we can see the calculated ROIC of 76%, and when we compare it to the current WAC for the same period, we can see 7.34%, which gives us a tremendous rate of return above their costs of capital. Do these numbers mean one company remains better than the other? Not even close. But the numbers can tell you to dig deeper to ensure each company you buy creates value for you. In the case of Microsoft, I would recommend looking at their ROIC over a longer time versus their cost of capital to give you a better idea of their performance. One of the flaws of ROIC is it only looks at 12 months, which is far too short a time to evaluate a company. Small sample sizes can skew results. The other way to use ROIC as a comparison tool is to compare each company against other companies directly or to look at each industry's benchmarks. Using ROIC to find a company that will build value for us, the shareholder, offers us another tool to determine shareholder-friendly companies.